Battlefield 2042's next update is making some dramatic changes. The first new armor game in eight years just launched. Warzone 2 leaks make it sound like a Blackout 2.0 and much more on Today in Gaming. Hey guys, Level Cap here. Battlefield 2042's next update is making a handful of dramatic changes. It launches tomorrow and removes the 128 player version of Breakthrough from the All Out Warfare mode. The Specialist Angel is losing the ability to give teammates armor with his supply bag. Stock weapon recoil is being improved, so weapons without attachments will handle better, while several weapons are also getting specific balance changes. Boris's Sentry Turret is getting a nerf, and vehicle counts are being adjusted in both 128 player Conquest and 64 player breakthrough. The patch notes also confirm that 2042 Season 1 update is launching in early June. And before we get to the rest of our stories, I have a quick word from today's sponsor. There's so many awesome games to play these days. When making a game character, I always like to pick one with a full head of gorgeous hair. However, back in the lame real world, if you're a guy, well, there's a 2 out of 3 chance that you're going to experience some form of hair loss by the age of 35. The good news is, today's sponsor Keeps offers clinically proven treatments to prevent hair loss. Get some peace of mind by talking to their expert medical advisors 24-7. They'll help you find the right routine and ship everything directly to your door. No trips to a doctor's office or pharmacy required. Just visit keeps.com slash level cap and they'll walk you through everything you need to know. And while it can take anywhere between 4 and 12 months to start seeing real results, I think these before and after photos really speak for themselves. Now you can't save what you've already lost though, so the sooner you you act, the more hair you'll save. So if you want to keep your full head of hair just like your gorgeous video game character, go to keeps.com slash level cap or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash level cap. All right, now back to 2042 news. Based on the game's pre-order marketing, each seasonal update should include one new all-out warfare map, new portal content, a new specialist, and new weapons. We're expecting map and specialist reworks to debut alongside the Season 1 update, but hard details regarding any of this stuff are still under wraps. Digging into the finer details of the patch notes, there are some changes and improvements worth highlighting. Aim assist on controllers has been tuned to prevent tracking enemies through walls. Input lag has also been reduced for all input types. Specialists will display the correct animations during the end of round screen in portal mode. The placement delay for deployable gadgets has been removed. This should massively improve the feeling of quickly placing items. The spawn beacon has been made larger and is visible from further away. Despite the 128 player breakthrough removal, discard, manifest, orbital, and kaleidoscope will still use the 128 player layout in the 64 player mode. This doesn't apply to last gen consoles, which only have the 64 player variants. Finally, the M5C Bolts missile launcher doesn't do unintended increased damage against air vehicles, and the vehicle itself is now in the armored vehicle category, limiting how many you can see active at once. Overall, the 4.1 update seems like a baby step in the right direction for 2042. It's clearly not the massive overhaul that players are waiting for, but it does bring some balance improvements that should hopefully make the game more enjoyable. Again, the update goes live tomorrow for all platforms. After eight long years, Bohemia Interactive have finally launched a new Arma title. Arma Reforger is a small-scale experience running on the studio's new Infusion engine. It serves as essentially a playable demo for the technology powering Arma 4, which is currently in development with no release date and will massively expand on Reforger's features and content. Now, to be fair, calling Reforger a tech demo or a small game is a bit of an understatement. It offers three factions on a gigantic island map two multiplayer modes, a simplified scenario editor called Game Master, vehicles, several faction appropriate weapons, and many new features. And probably the most exciting new thing is the Infusion engine itself. If you're familiar with DayZ, you've probably heard about this engine before. It uses an early implementation of the engine originally developed in a collaborative effort between DayZ's standalone dev team and Bohemia. Reforger uses an updated and enhanced version of Infusion that offers massively improved performance, graphics, quality and refined dynamic lighting. Compared to Arma 3, a typical scenario with AI troops and real players will now run at nearly double the FPS when recreated in Reforger. Work done on Reforger will help inform the development of Arma 4. Bohemia are promising a year of support for this early access title, though it's unclear if they're adding new content in that year. 
Now, if you're wondering why there's so much hype for Armor 4 in Reforger, it's important to remember that the Armor games are both the biggest Milsim infantry combat titles around, and they've been the springboard for some of the biggest genres in gaming today. Battle Royale mods for Armor 2 and Armor 3 are how we got DayZ, PUBG, and the countless titles inspired by them. And the new engine tech with Reforger and Arma 4 will enable Arma's modders to create cutting edge mods that push way beyond what was possible previously. It's certainly an exciting time time for the armor community and FPS modders in general. Call of Duty Warzone 2 leaks suggest the upcoming Battle Royale will be more similar to Black Ops 4's Blackout Battle Royale mode than Warzone. In terms of details, the leaks say that weapon loadouts will still be available, but you'll have to complete many objectives to unlock strongholds to access them. Weapons will only have 5 attachments instead of Warzone's current 8. Armor returns, but you'll need to loot a satchel before you can equip it. Blackout's limited inventory returns is a bag system that lets you hold extra weapons. The map will likely feature key locations from the original Modern Warfare 2, like High Rise, Terminal, and Afghan. Verdansk is also coming back. And finally, Warzone 2 will offer a firing range that lets you test weapons and shows their damage when shooting targets. Leaker Tom Henderson claims this information is accurate based on his sources, but leaks should always be considered speculation until proven otherwise. Star Citizen's Invictus Week starts on Friday. It's essentially an in-game expo that showcases all sorts of ships, new content, activities, and more. And anyone can play for free while the event is live. Nearly every ship on display at the expo will also be available to test fly for free on a rotating schedule. This is a big deal since many of Star Citizen's ships take a long time to grind for and cost a lot of money, plus the ships themselves are pretty spectacular to explore. If you want to try out a new ship, Invictus is a great opportunity opportunity to test them out. The Invictus launch includes a new ship called the Scorpius, which is heavily inspired by the classic X-Wing design from Star Wars. The event will also give players a chance to tour a Javelin Destroyer. This ship is the biggest player flyable ship that RSI have announced so far and isn't available in the game yet. The tours will let you explore a portion of the ship's multiple decks. The developers are also teasing a new FPS combat event that will debut during Invictus week. Details are vague, but rumors indicate that it could be one of the most intricate in-game events to date. Invictus week ends on the 31st. Free fly players will have to buy a starter pack to continue playing after that date. The console version of Extraction Royale Scavengers has been cancelled following the acquisition by the studio Behavior Interactive. The PC version of Scavengers is currently in early access on Steam, but its player base is minimal these days. A small team is maintaining the game, with the bulk of the studio working on a new project. Before we get to our final story today, just a heads up to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. We have tons of new videos in the works on Star Citizen, Hunt Showdown, Gaming News, Battlefield, and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to catch them all. Apex Legends has a new hero, but he's exclusive to the game's mobile version. Fade is the latest addition to the game. He was added this week alongside the launch of Apex Legends Mobile. His abilities are similar to Wraith's, his tactical lets him rewind to a previous position, and his ultimate is an area of effect ability that puts anyone in its radius into phase shift mode for a limited time. Unfortunately, Respawn says Fade was specifically designed for the mobile version of the game and won't be coming to PC or console without a significant rework. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.